Yeah, I stayed up late last night and was diving in on Blake Snell. He has been phenomenal. You go back to 2018, like you said, 21 and 5 with a 189 for Tampa. Wins the Cy Young. He's got a chance to win in, in the American League and then flip over to the National League. And texting with Max Wildstein, by the way, Max has got to pick it up for us in research here. Eric Nays. Two week trip to Amsterdam. What? I no. Know. I don't know if he comes back the same. <laughs> we will see. <sighs> well. To be continued. Okay? So I, I said, Max, stay away from the red light district, Nays. Oh, hey, Nays, do not do that. Don't take that advice. <laughs> but let's dive in. I said, Max, dive in on Blake Snell and let me know what he's doing different. Seems like his curveball's exploding through the zone. And it is. He has been phenomenal. So I want to get in and give him some serious love because he's been the best pitcher for the San Diego Padres all year. And it's looking like it'll come down to him, Justin Steele, Gallen, maybe Strider. But he's certainly the front runner right now. So pause this, bring up the first board. MLB ERA leaders this season. He's sitting at a 2-4-3. Justin Steele at a 2-4-9. Garrett Cole, Sonny Gray's been really good. <laughs> and Kyle Bradish for the Baltimore Orioles. But I want to take you back. What was it, May 31st? Yes, May 31st. Let's get into it. Start against Miami, where everything. He got off to, actually, a pretty bad start. He was sitting 1-6 and six with an ERA north of 5 early in the season. And then he went out May 31st and dominated the Marlins. And look at the run he has been on. 13 and 3 with an ERA of 133. No one's hitting him. Opponent batting average, opponent OPS, K's per nine. So give me his arsenal. I want to take you through it because he can do things not a lot of lefties can do on a nightly basis. He's got the high heater that explodes in the zone to the right handed hitters. Look at where the catcher set up. You've heard me time, pause this time and time again. If a lefty can get in on a right handed hitter, it's special because then he starts to move the zone. If you let a right-handed hitter just leak out over and stick his nose out over the plate, usually a lefty's going to get touched up. So he establishes his 95 up in the zone. What else does he got? Wipeout slider. Kind of tunneling it off the high heater. You think that's a heater for 58 feet, Paul DeYoung, and it's gone. Mixing in a little changeup. Nice little dead fish to Mitch Hanniger right there. Jake Berger. You have to honor 95 miles an hour, 97 miles an hour. You don't think he's going to throw you a change up in a big spot. But the equalizer all year and last night has been his curveball. This thing is exploding through the zone. Nobody hits it. Look at his curveball numbers. He's throwing it about 19% of the time. Bet you if he went over to the Dodgers, they'd be like, hey, man, you need to rip this like 35% of the time. Guys are hitting 088 with a 152 slug. So I wanted to get in and try and give people at home a taste. If we got some low homes, let's get back into the tape here. Some of the great curveballs I had a chance to face. You get Barry Zito. You get a Cliff Lee. Kind of that nasty rainbow drop. His is a little bit hotter and harder coming out. But I want to show you one's a curveball and one's a fastball. And we're going to get here and pause. And what are big league hitters looking for? Do you see his fingers behind that baseball? All you see is all white. Now walk over to his curveball. Do you see his one finger or how the shape of the yeah. white baseball changes? That's what you're looking for when you're hitting. And if you're on heater Ow. and you see a different shape, it's an automatic take unless you have two strikes. And that's the battle or you never come off fastball and you try and make your decision sometime as the ball's progressing towards the plate. But for me, that shows itself. And if I'm not on curveball, it's take, take, and you hope he doesn't land it. But he was landing it all night last night. And he was on fire. I want to take you through a few ABs. Right-handed hitter, Ahmed Rosario. Ooh. So pause that. He's going back in there, right? Try and guess the pitches with me. 1-0, missed. It was probably a strike. He's going back in. 2-0, where is he going? Pause. Uh, fastball. You would think, right? But yeah. Rosario's a good fastball hitter, can shoot him the other way. He knows he's in swing mode. Let me throw him a changeup right here and steal a strike. Ooh. 
Now he's got nowhere to go. He doesn't know what's coming, so he stays on heater. Nasty slider. He thought it was a fastball. And now I can put you away with any pitch I got in my arsenal because you're swinging. Mm. Pretty awesome stuff. And Rosario's going to have to go back up there, pause, and make the decision. Am I back on the fastball? But he's got command of three pitches. That's the rub. Get into Altman, A.B. Left on left just seems unfair facing him. He can go 97 black away, get you in swing mode, throw a curveball right there. Now sliders down and away. After that pitch, wipe him out. Throw it again. I bet you he can't take it twice. Nasty. Freddie Freeman, you could tell. Life on the line. I want Freddie taking the A-B. Maybe not against Blake Snell. Slider down the way. Curveball whenever he wanted to. Another nasty slider down the way. Paint pellet slider. Curveball. Bring up the last board and I'll throw it back. This season, MLB ranks hitters versus Blake Snell's breaking stuff. 096, lowest in the game. Opponent slug, lowest in the game. Strikeouts, most in the game. You can almost tell you what's coming. Looking at the pitch grips is fascinating. Robert and I are going, how yeah. does anyone hit that?